peso. The Kenyan shilling closing steady at 87.50.60 to the dollar, and that was on Tuesday. But traders, but traders expect it to firm slightly in coming sessions as companies as companies prepare to make tax payments in the local currency. Year to date, the currency has lost 1.5 percent. On the against the greenback crossing over to the nairobi securities exchange we saw the main share index closing up 0.1 percent to settle at 4715.34 points as foreign investors bought banking stocks encouraged by signals of improved economic outlook augustine misoka a research analyst with the sterling capital is our analyst for the day. Many thanks for joining us. Thank now, on the back me. of what IMF said yesterday, we had an interview with the IMF director for Africa, Antoinette Seye, and uh, she says that Af Kenya is one of the emerging, uh, one of the frontier countries that is likely to get into the emerging markets, um, you know, in the next generation. For you, what are some of the, some of the uh, key underlying um, factors that you see underpinning this um, sentiment? I think uh, the sentiments from the IMF uh, for me are feasible. Uh, Kenya is making a lot of headways in terms of infrastructure. We saw the president uh, in China a few weeks back and he managed to source for funds for the standard railway gauge from Mombasa to Malaba. And those are some of the things that will open up our economy. We know uh, Kenya is already in the process of uh, opening up the uh, Lamu port and the La uh, under the Lapset project in collaboration with Southern Sudan and Ethiopia. So all of these developments are some of the things that will put us uh, in, in the emerging market frontiers, as well as uh, the oil that we've recently discovered. All those are some of the key things that will be drivers for the Kenyan economy going forward. Of course, the most interesting thing that came out of the, from the IMF is the fact that they seem to think that the trial uh, of the president and his deputy at the International Criminal Court against humanity um, crimes against humanities, that it's not likely to deter investors. And this is a very strong signal coming at a point where Kenya is actually looking to raise a euro bond. For you, what do you read into this? I think uh, the signal was very clear during the election period where there were a lot of jitters and uh, we really expected foreigners to, a lot of capital flight at that time. And still uh, we managed to see the economy stabilize, the stock market has been on an upward momentum, things have been stable. So I really think uh, the same same sentiments are what maybe the investor, the foreign investors are really looking at. The economy is stable and the trials against uh, the president and the deputy president really don't seem to deter them. They really have confidence in the Kenyan economy. They really have confidence in what the country is doing and all the prospects that uh, the Kenyan uh, the, the government or the, the Kenyan market all has, it's, it's all about, uh, you know, it's giving a lot of confidence to the investors. Mm -hmm. Looking at the key economic pillars of the economy, is there one particular sector that for you is a low-hanging fruit at the moment, something that you're very optimistic and, uh, you know, looking for high returns? I think uh, mining has been uh, one of the uh, sectors of the economy that for a very long period of time looks as if it has been neglected. But right now there has, there's been a lot of uh, focus on it. I think if uh, proper legislations are put in place and uh, agreements are put in place with the key stakeholders, then I think it's one of the, uh, the sectors that uh, will really be uh, driver for the economy going forward. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, drifting out to the debt market, whereby we've seen a lot of high liquidity, especially for the primary auctions. But yet again, we've been seeing yields falling uh, quite drastically. If you look at the 91, which is the key benchmark for interest rates in Kenya, last week it dropped by about 69 basis points, and it's now edging to 9.2 percent, not too far from the key B, the key lending rate, uh, central bank's key rate of 8.5. What would you expect from this week's auction? I think uh, from this week's auction, I expect the yields to fall slightly. But again, Beatrice, you should remember that uh, with the VAT uh, bill coming into place, we've seen cost of goods going up. This month as well, I expect inflation to really go up. So I don't think uh, the yields, are the, down, the downward momentum is really sustainable mm -hmm. in the long run. Mm -hmm. I expect that maybe we might see yields today for the, say, 182 and 364 auction today. Maybe the yields will come down slightly. But uh, from then, I expect them to correct upwards. Mm -hmm. Of course, investors are also likely to factor in the jump in inflation that you, you've talked about. Yeah, they will factor that. And I know maybe once the inflation numbers come in towards the end of the month, 
then we'll see a different thing in the in the yields in the auctions for the uh, T bills. Mm -hmm. Let me pick your brain on that with regards to the rise in inflation, the pace that you're likely to have. Last month we saw it jumping by about 65 basis points. What would you expect uh, for this month? This month, Beatrice, I expect inflation to come in at around 8% or even 9% because we've seen That's cost of goods. That's a 300 uh, basis point jump. Yeah, I believe uh, the cost of the VAT and uh, also the, the increase in uh, fuel costs as well, I think all those will be key factors in pushing up inflation rate. You, you see electricity is already included in uh, the VAT, uh, fuel cost has already gone up, and all these are key co components of the inflation, so definitely they will push inflation up. Mm -hmm. And how do you see that uh, also impacting, if you look at it, at the investment portfolio, especially for local investors, how are they likely to partake uh, uh, inflation taking up? I think uh, for local investors, uh, maybe with, with that they will then see yields going up, and for me, I really feel that investors will shift a little bit now towards the equities market, mm -hmm. and that's where maybe they will put their money in the short term. Mm -hmm. And in terms of consumption, how do you see that faring? That will definitely uh, hurt the disposable income uh, for the common mwanainchi, and definitely, uh, at the end of the day, the consumption will be slightly lower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now let's look at the stock market, and you've said you're likely to have some good performance there, especially with the yields of, um, you know, uh, edging lower in the debt market. We saw KCB yesterday coming in 1.1% uh, higher to about 44 shillings and 75 cents. For you, what are some of the key sentiments driving this stock? I think uh, KCB and Equity Bank, after the corporate news that came in, you know, the half-year uh, results. I really expected now the market to calm down and maybe uh, stocks now to co uh, the banking sector stocks to correct downwards, mm -hmm. but they are still defying that they are going up. I think it's more driven by uh, foreign investors who are really keen on entering and taking positions right now in expectation of uh, a good full year results. So maybe in the short term, maybe we might see the counter stabilize at uh, that level but I don't expect it to uh, fall any, any lower. Mm -hmm. For you, are there any particular stocks that you're eyeing uh, this week into next week? Uh, this week, I'll, I'll really be looking at Kenjin and KPLC. Mm -hmm. I expect uh, them to release their full year earnings. Uh, for them, I know maybe they're, they're, there's a little bit of uh, uh, speculation and uncertainty, especially on KPLC. We don't really know uh, what numbers they'll release after the, uh, the deputy president uh, rejected their bid to incre increase their tariffs. So I really expect uh, maybe they'll uh, do, uh, they won't do quite well, but uh, maybe they will give investors some dividends, and that's what will maybe drive the counter upwards. Mm -hmm. And if you recall also, they had mentioned earlier, they had put a newspaper advert saying that uh, they are owed about 8 billion shillings from people who have not paid their bills. So that, of course, will also have an impact on their numbers. Definitely, that will have an impact on their numbers. So I don't really expect them to do uh, quite well. But in, in terms of... Uh, I, giving the investors some dividends i expect them to you know give investors dividends so that the investors have some confidence mm -hmm. that going forward the counter will still be strong mm -hmm. with kenjin of course we've, uh, within the year we've seen them uh, increasing their capacity with different uh, uh, either wind power or solar gener generation we've seen them increasing their capacity how do you see that uh, you know helping the numbers i think uh, that won't be really be felt uh, maybe in this financial year but going forward I expect that to be a huge contributor, and especially the, what the government is targeting, the 5,000 megawatts mm -hmm. that will be injected to the national grid, Kenjan will play a very big part in that, and I expect all that now to be uh, key drivers for the company. And especially now for Kenjan, for me, I really feel it's a very nice long-term counter at the current levels. It's very nice to enter at these levels. So I expect a lot of uh, speculative trading for now, but it's still a very strong counter. Mm -hmm. Augustine, always a pleasure to have you. Many thanks for the insight. Thank that you. is Augustine Mikosa. He is a research analyst with Sterling Investment.